Hey, what's up, family? It's your girl, Lolita. Welcome back to Daughter of David Art and God's Development Plan. You guys, the Holy Spirit is so real. This is a random video, but I really felt <laughs> in my spirit to share. I woke up this morning and was asking God for his peace, you know, because I know the Lord told me that he will give me peace, you know, and one of the fruits of the spirit and the word says, Jesus says, my peace, I leave, you know, with you, my peace, I give to you, not as the world would give it, right? I was really praying about that and I was looking for scriptures about peace to meditate on. The Lord allowed me to land on 2 Thessalonians. I, I want to say it was 3 and 16. I focused on this one little part that just says, the Lord himself gives peace. You know, he gives us peace, the Lord himself. Like I really, I took that small little part and I was just really thinking about it, you know? And I was like, wow. And I kind of just, as I was doing my workout and stuff and kind of going throughout my day, I was just like, meditating on the fact that God himself gives it to us it doesn't come through money it doesn't come through circumstance and situation jobs it doesn't come through romantic relationships it doesn't come through our children behaving no God himself gives us peace amen and I just was really meditating on that because another scripture that the Lord has had me on is second corinthians is two of them they the reference scriptures kind of for each other it's second corinthians 4 and 17 which says for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all meaning that every trouble every affliction everything we're going through right now is still because the word says all things work together for the good of them that love the lord it's going to achieve an eternal glory that outweighs all of the trouble that we're going through in the present time. So you get a momentary trouble, but you got eternal glory. That Holy Spirit is so real because I've been on this for just this scripture a past couple days and as, as well as the peace. And like I said, you know, we know that peace is one of the nine fruits of the spirit. And... As I was doing my walk today, because that's when the Lord will speak to me oftentimes, it's like he was reminding me because I had been I had been kind of going like through emotional things. And it was like a reminder for me to check on people like, hey, like I said, Lord, help me not, you know, in my angst, help me not to forget to check on somebody else, you know. And I, he moved me to call my mom. And I don't speak to people on my walk. When people call me, I don't even pick up if I'm doing my walk because I know the Lord is speaking to me and I don't want to miss what he has to say because I'm on the phone. But he moved me to call, like, hey, call your mom. Because ordinarily I would call her before or I would call her after. And just tell her you love her and, and let her know she's a good mom. You know, um, he, he moved me to tell. And, I, you know, I called my mom and I just wanted to tell her that. You know, and she was at work. I'm like, yeah, mom, I just wanted to tell you and. And, um, and, and there's a reason I'm sharing this. And my mom, which I got something in return I wasn't expecting. And my mom was like, I love you too. You know, she was like, you're a good daughter. And that just lifted my spirit so high because there's a testimony if your parent can say that you're a good kid. There, there's a testimony in that. And it just lifted my spirit so high because I was expecting to call her and tell her that she's good and that I love her. But I wasn't expecting her to say, you know what I mean? I wasn't expecting to hear it back. It was like, it was a, a pleasant surprise, right? I say all that to say, we never know where anyone is at mentally. And the Lord was ministering all of these things to me. I opened up my Instagram and the first thing I saw was Tabitha Brown and I saw her face look sad and I was like, oh no, you know, some things you're automatically concerned and I was order, I was instantly concerned because I saw her facial expression. So my concern was for her, even though I don't personally know her. And um, I was like, oh no, Auntie Tab crying child. No, no. <laughs> like, what is this? What click? And I automatically clicked because I was upset immediately when I saw she was upset about something. And um, I clicked it 
and she was talking about uh dj twitch which i don't even know dj twitch i don't i don't really watch tv anymore like i used to and i saw that this brother had committed suicide and that's what miss tabitha brown was talking about and she was crying and explaining you know and giving hope and encouragement through even the tragedy that has occurred and you guys I, this is why i say the holy spirit is so real because i was asking god about his peace asking him to give me his peace and he was giving me the reminder through his word that this present affliction he's had me muttering that to myself to remind myself that this present affliction doesn't compare to the glory that will be revealed in me this present affliction that you're going through doesn't compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in you amen and i felt such a urge to make a video about this because suicide is real you know and god and there's a scripture that says my father when jesus says my father has been working even before now my father has been working even until now and see god was already working this message in me before i even found out about this brother's suicide so it was like once i jumped online and saw that i say oh god this oh something going around okay it was a ding 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 tap into it moment like oh okay some see one thing about it god got you plugged in when you don't even realize you're plugged in amen the holy spirit is so real and the reason i felt the need to share and to just come on here and encourage somebody i want to encourage somebody that god knows exactly how to get to you just be looking for him he knows exactly how to speak to you just be listening for him he knows exactly how to touch you just be feeling for him look for him no matter what's going on look for him in every situation every circumstance oh my god i can remember it, it just caused me to reflect i remember in my 20s which was i will say one of the hardest times in my life you know how you look back at a time in your life and you are surprised that you made it out alive that's me for my 20s it's a testament to god's goodness where i didn't think i would make it out alive because of the level of depression that i was under in my 20s and i definitely felt suicidal i remember one particular day and i'm just gonna share this i would not do this now let me be very clear let me be very clear i would not now because i know that that's not what i want amen i want to i want to i want to be welcomed into heaven when it's over amen no matter how i leave here um i don't want to go by my own hand because i want to i want to make it in to the to the kingdom amen but say all this to say i, I remember in my 20s when i was suicidal i had gotten to a point one particular night and i and the scary thing about me that that i knew you know yourself to a degree that i was like man i was fearful of myself because i said i feel that if i can com if i commit to it i'll do it and i knew that i was i was inching toward it i could feel myself committed to to executing it right i was sitting up i was in such a dark place I was spiritually, mentally, emotionally in a dark place, and I was physically in a dark place. I was sitting in the dark, and I was contemplating doing it, and I was like, I'm just going to get it over with. You know, I'm tired of this now. I done had enough. I can't go on. I was like sitting at my computer in the dark, and this is why I say God knows how to get to you my god he knows how to get to you god knows that i'm a reader he knew that i would read and somehow some way i ended up on this suicide prevention website <laughs> and it was so methodical the way that it was set up i read one line and it convinces you basically not to kill yourself it's something where you re you read it you're not talking to somebody you read and by the time you've read you've completely changed your mind and you guys i read and i read and it was this long thing but i didn't even realize how long i was reading you know and i read and read this suicide prevention website and by the time i was done reading it had said something to the effect of suicide 
is a permanent end to your life over a temporary problem in your life. And it broke it down in such a way that you understood that if you ended all things permanently, you would never see the good, better thing that's coming ahead. That is 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever so the problem won't last forever but the glory is gonna last forever and that thing spoke to me and i am still here today by god's grace because i was not going to be here i was going to leave i was i had my mind had settled on it so i just when i saw that and I saw this 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 man with his he got kids he had a wife I'm like that thing just like woo because God had already been talking to me about it and then when I opened up online and saw this I was like my God my God my God my God I just want to tell somebody I really do that you're loved because I can testify. I can testify. I can speak from experience. I just did not think I was going to be here. I was like, ooh, I'm not going to make it. Like, I really believed that because I was so, so prone. I was like, oh, my God, I can't. It's like, and when you go through depression like that, what you find is you find yourself trying to hold on to yourself, but yet you feel that you can't hold on to yourself. And you're cut, you're always in a cycle of spiraling and trying to pull it back together. You spiral, then you try to pull it back together. You spiral and you try to, it's like you in this, this, this cycle of being constantly on the edge, constantly on the brink. But what God has been showing me is that the whole point is because you can't hold on to yourself. You got to hold on to Jesus and let Jesus hold on to you because we really can't hold on to ourselves. It's Jesus who we got to hold on to. I'm trying to tell somebody it's him. It's the only way. My God, it's, ooh, it's the only way. Some people think they can hold on to a dog. They think that's what they holding on to is their emotional support pet. Some people think they holding on to their wife. Some people think they holding on to their husband. Some people think they holding on to their best friend. Some people think they holding on to their job. They love their work. They love the kind of work they do. But all those things going to pass away. But if you got Jesus from the order of Melchizedek, you got the everlasting priest. You got the permanent priest who is always interceding on your behalf. I want to tell somebody that think they alone. You got the Holy Spirit. You got Jesus. Amen. If you don't have, you feel like people praying for you. <laughs> you got somebody watching out for you that you're not even aware of. God, my Lord have mercy. And his will is that you make it. His will is that you already have the victory. And sometimes the toughest part for us to do is to endure. And I just want to encourage somebody to encourage somebody. Because it doesn't always have to be, and I feel the need to say this, it doesn't always have to be a dissertation when someone is going through something or they're down it doesn't have to be a lecture sometimes a pat on the back and a hey man it's gonna get better you know what let me just treat you to lunch today come on now let's eat lunch together it's the smallest thing sometimes a phone call to say a quick I love you and you're doing a good job hey I see you doing the best you can it doesn't always have to be a lecture or a dissertation to someone 
Sometimes it's the smallest things to pull that person back from the brink. To, 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 to deter their attention from the issue that they feel has gotten larger than them. Just to create that little space of relief for them. As God is working. Because God was working before you got there. And he'll be working while you're there. And he'll be working once you leave that person's side. So, it's just the smallest things. It's the smallest thing. Like I said, even when I called my mom to say that to her, and she said, you're a good daughter to me. I, I didn't know. I, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, that just lifted my spirit. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting to hear that. Okay, God. Excuse me, you guys. I just came back from working out, and I'm on a lunch break as well. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm in here sweating, looking crazy. I apologize. But... I felt my spirit to just move and to speak and to say this. And I want to tell somebody, somebody who was suicidal, severely, severely depressed, severely, severely, my God, all the things I tried to do to, to medicate myself, to comfort myself. And then to find that the only comfort is Jesus, my God. He's the only one who can do it. He's the, he's the mind regulator. He's the mind renewer. And that's why that scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And my prayer for myself, my prayer for you, is that we will all master the renewing of our mind. It's a daily thing to renew your mind daily. It's not like I renewed it this week when I went to church on Sunday. We got to renew it every single day. And it takes practice. I'm in practice for that now to, you know, make sure I'm getting my daily mind renewal, you know. And I just pray the same for, for you guys. In Jesus Christ's name, may we remove, renew our minds in the Lord. Amen. All right. It's been your girl Lolita from Daughter of David Art and God's Development Plan. Love you guys. Bye. Shout out to the host, Lolita. As she likes to say, she wants to out, sound out that T all the time. Lolita. But shout out to her, man. It's a great page. Definitely feel the glory of God in her page. Shout out to her for that, letting God's light shine through her. God has a plan for both you and me, but there are levels to reach before eternity. We must prepare as we share our testimony. Our lives are God's development plan, yeah. Our lives are God's development plan.